Hello viewers and welcome to our channel where we prepare you towards your school and licensure exams. Today we will be discussing CROC 2 2019 booklet. I know many of you have been waiting for a video such as this. So if you are new on this channel, kindly subscribe and turn on the post notification bell for more videos such as these. Okay, and I would like to also apologize for any background noise that may be interfering with what we are doing okay so let's quickly begin let's begin so we have a 25 year old woman suffering from diabetes since she was nine and now she has been admitted at the nephrology unit for edema blood uh, high blood uh, pressure proteinuria that is uh, more or less like a nephrotic syndrome Nephrotic syndrome accompanied with uh, decreased GFR that's glomerular filtration rate 10. The normal rate is about 90 to 120 milliliters per minute. Now, this person's DM has been complicated with kidney failure. For this presentation, I just kidney failure. So, what we normally do for people suffering from kidney failure is either we give them a dialysis or we do what uh, organ transplant or kidney transplant. But in this case, we will go in for what hemodialysis. So you transfer the patient to the hemodialysis what unit. Okay. Alright, so we have a 59-year-old woman in the rheumatology unit. For what? For a case of scleroderma. That's what they are suspecting. And that's leading to the following uh, symptoms. And as a result, there is an increased level of what oxyproline. So how can you know what is happening here? First of all, you need to understand what scleroderma is. A scleroderma is simply an autoimmune reaction or inflammation to the connective tissue. To the connective tissue. And we all know that connective tissue are mainly made up of what? Collagen fibers. These collagen fibers are also made up of proline, uh, glycine, lysine. So when there is a breakdown of these collagen fibers, you will actually see them in urine. And that is why there is elevated level of what? Uh, oxyproline in urine. And that is why our answer should be what? There's a formation of what? Antibodies to the collagen fibers. All right. So we have a 34-year-old man on the third day of Subtrizone treatment for acute otitis, that's ear infection. The person developed diarrhea five to six times per day. Look at the correlation. Right after being given uh, subtrizone, the person started developing what? Diarrhea. Now, look at the feces. There's no mucus or blood admixtures. If there were to be, then we would be thinking of uh, organisms like uh, Shigella or even Salmonellosis. We're thinking of something like that, but now there's nothing like that, and there's even no occult blood in feces. Now, stool culture detected no pathogenic, no pathogenic what germs. That should tell you that there's no uh, microorganism causing this kind of what diarrhea. So what comes to mind is this could be as a result of what uh, the antibiotics the person is what taking, and hence our diagnosis is but antibiotic associated diarrhea okay so this is a, a chronic alcoholic who was hospitalized for pneumonia now the patient on hospitalization became disoriented in time and space developed fear inducing visual what, hallucinations and agitations there are also what tremors present. X will reveal what? Covalence form of covalence from pneumonia. What tactics should be chosen regarding this patient? First of all, this is somebody who is addicted to drinking. Addicted to drinking. So usually, and it's as a result of this addiction, now that he has been hospitalized in the hospital, I mean, he has been hospitalized, he's not getting access to this alcohol. So the patient is actually what? Suffering from what? A withdrawal symptoms. Withdrawal. 
all right and that's why this patient should be transferred to the narcology department because this department deals with people suffering from addictions like alcohol and even with drugs like a non steroidal anti inflammatory with drugs medications people suffering from these things always must be admitted in uh, this narcology what department so our answer is uh, transfer into the inpatient narcology, narcology department all right so we have a 25 year old woman complaint of fatigue dizziness hemorrhagic rash on the skin and this occurred a month ago now in blood there is this is erythrocyte one this is below normal extremely below normal this is big b color index is b actually almost all the see almost all the findings in, in the blood are low what it means is that this patient could be developing pancytopenia pancytopenia which occurs when all blood uh, components are low so this could be the case so how do we go about it we just need to do what a bone marrow biopsy bone marrow biopsy you can only get these things from sternal puncture sternal puncture around the uh, the zephyr process just below it i think yeah okay this is interesting so we have a 35 year old man complain of fatigue as well palpitations and all sort of things visual snow and dizziness and so we have a history of peptic ulcer history now when people come with this kind of symptoms and they have history of peptic ulcer start thinking of the complications of peptic ulcer and there are about three of them we have bleeding or hemorrhagic we have uh, perforation and we have penetration these are the three basic complications of peptic ulcer so now let's go on so we have the respiratory foundings over there, systolic mama, detailed over the cardiac apex, and all that. Look, don't waste too much of your time. This look at it. Though these things are looking normal, but this patient is suffering from a chronic case of anemia, and this chronic case of anemia is called post-hemorrhagic anemia. Because this patient might have developed what bleeding internal, I don't know what bleeding okay, because of the ulcer, and that is why you might not really see it in a blood smear. But this patient is suffering from it, looking at the symptoms and looking at, at his history. So, this is post hemorrhagic or anemia. This is also very common in, uh, in ladies or in women who are menstruating sometimes, you know. Chronically, they might develop what anemia, and that is called called post hemorrhagic anemia. Okay, so this is a 51-year-old man suffering from vomiting with blood. What happened? This patient is into what? Drinking, drinking. Now, this is a clue. You see, when you are drinking alcohol, the organ that suffers the most is the liver. The liver suffers the most of people who are drinking excessively. All right, so what happened? Jundis developed a teric, same as jundis. You see, abdominal distension, umbilical hernia, and ascites have all what developed. And look at the, the, the size. Of the liver plus three, the spleen plus three that is what hepatosplenomegaly has also what developed. Even hemoglobin is low to some extent, platelet is even low. So, what is the cause of portal hypertension? People with this kind of uh, drinking history usually suffer from liver cirrhosis, liver cirrhosis, liver cirrhosis. So, our answer should be hepatic cirrhosis. Okay, so we have a 26-year-old woman suspected to suffer from systemic lupus erythematosus. It's a suspicion, but during the test, the test, they detected what? LE cells. LE cells simply refers to what? 
lipos erythematous cells. Then it's got antibodies to the native DNA. Antibodies to the native DNA. This is your clue. Don't waste much time. There are antibodies that are developing into their own what? DNA. So what it means is that, and of course, we also know that systemic lipodesmosis is an autoimmune reaction or autoimmune inflammation. So your answer is just straightforward. DNA antibody. So that is the immunologic what indicator for this particular what disease. So development of antibodies to their native DNA. So DNA what antibodies. So now we have a woman who came to the doctor with complaints of increased body temperature. That is 37.8. There is sore throat. Then there is a mandibular lymph node enlargement, palatine tonsils also enlarged and coupled with grey coating. Coupled with grey coating. This is very typical for people suffering from diphtheria. 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 So this is oropharyngeal diphtheria. And in some questions, they will tell you that when you try to scrape it or remove it, it bleeds. It bleeds. It bleeds. So that is also a clue to know that this is diphtheria. Unfortunately, they didn't bring that one over here, but this is diphtheria, regardless. So now we have a 42-year-old man, a dispatcher, who suffers from peptic ulcer disease of the duodenum. The disease is moderate severity. He wants to be assigned a disability group. Make the conclusion. Well, the person is suffering from peptic ulcer, and from indication, the person has not yet developed any complication. There is no complication because it is of what? Moderate severity. Which means that this person is capable of working and can be employed as well. So there is nothing wrong with employing the person. So your answer should be capable of working and employable. So feel free, uh, entrepreneurs, employ them. All right? Employ them. Let them work. So you can make money. Okay. So this is a big question, or I mean, a lot of things are there. So, but don't be overwhelmed with too much words to ponder about. Just go straight. Look at the blood smear, reactive blah blah blah, and look at the lymphocyte number, eighty-five percent. And they've even given you a clue here. Crumpinch shadows. Comprint shadows. In other books, they will say smart cells. Smart cells. Anytime you see these things, they are simply referring to chronic lymphoblastic leukemia or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Don't think too much about it. That is just how it is. So here, your answer is straightforward. And of course, that's what is leading to all these uh, enlargement and all these, you know, uh, signs and symptoms. So your answer is chronic, okay, over here it says chronic lymphatic leukemia. So the same thing, so lymphoblastic or lymphocytic leukemia. All right, we have a 23-year-old man complaining of facial illness, uh, headache, dizziness, low urine output, and urine discoloration. This can be called, what we call the nephritic syndrome, because there is blood, there is a uh, a low urine output and all that. So now with this, and of course, they are thinking that the patient had what? Acute tonsillitis. Acute tonsillitis. Now, okay, there's temperature as well. Now, anytime you see something like this, the diagnosis is simple. Somebody suffering from acute tonsillitis and developing uh, kidney problems. We call it post streptococcal glomerular nephritis so this is a case of post streptococcal glomerular nephritis and this is usually caused by the beta hemolytic streptococcus beta hemolytic streptococcus so that is the word etiological word factor so your answer should be a all right there's a 40 year old man suffering from 
ankylosing of spondylitis. This ankylosing spondylitis is simply inflammation of your backbone or the, uh, uh, the spine, basically the spine. Yes. So please just note it and then it leads to a lot of uh, joint pains and stuff like that. But one of the most important things too that occur in about 30% of the people suffering from ankylosing spondylitis is what we call ovaritis anterior ovaritis and this is just uh, inflammation or it includes aridosacritis and aritis all right and it normally leads to uh, eye pain redness and blood vision so of course since we have uh, one of them over here we'll just choose it aridosacritis i don't know how you want to pronounce it but that is how i pronounce it so take it <laughs> all right so let's move on to the next question all right, this is a 52 year old woman who is suffering who is suffering for two years from dull occasionally exacerbating pain in her right right acostal area okay so you know where you're going to right after eat this occurs after eating high fat foods okay so this is bow you see there's bitter taste in her mouth in the morning and all those things this is what bow you are talking about what bowel and where is the bowel coming from the bowel comes from what the gallbladder so we are thinking of a problem that is relating to the what to the gallbladder and as such what do we do we do an ultrasound to help us the diagnosis all right so just do ultrasound and you'll find it over there and then you treat simple as that okay so that is e then we have another question over here so we have a 57 year old woman okay weakness dyspnea loss of appetite blah 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 then look at this the patient is pale 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 and that's what bright red feature with thunk see when you see somebody who is pale usually we do on general examination to check for the presence of anemia if you when the person is pale that means there's a presence of what anemia now let's go further to see why we say that now you see the spleen cannot be palpated but look at the blood uh side is what 1.2 that is low color index is 1.4 that is high that means something is not going right and as a result there is what macrocytes that means the red blood cells are big and they become big when they don't undergo proper what differentiation proper differentiation and of course you need some ingredients and this ingredient include vitamin b12 b12 which can actually be obtained from the food that we eat. Now, this person has lost appetite. That will tell you that the person is not having enough uh, vitamin B12 in the system. As a result, red blood cells are not undergoing to a differentiation. And as such, it's bigger size and it's color what? Index. That's the, 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 the large or huge color what? Index. So, this kind of uh, anemia is actually called pernicious anemia pernicious anemia also called megaloblastic anemia so over here there is what the prevalence of megaloblast or megaloblast or megaloblastic so this is megaloblastic what? anemia so you do bone marrow puncture to assess all of these things and then yeah basically that is just it all right so that brings us to the end of our first uh, tutorials on 2019 booklet now, if you want more of these, you can find them on the Medit app, which I will put a link in the description box. Do well to get in touch, do well to download it and have access to a lot of questions on that platform. Alright, until then, see you in the next video.